Good morning. Good morning. Hey, I don't like your pretty light this morning. It's good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, I got a couple things or several, a number of things that I wanted to mention this morning. One, uh, those of you who are watching on Facebook, we appreciate those who acknowledge that they are listening and sign your name or make a comment or something of that sort. So that's good. So we just kind of get an idea. Some people did that this week and we appreciate more doing that. Um, the other thing in your, uh, in your uh, use of notes, there's a little thing about the chorus, the chorus and handbell at Hope Lutheran Church in at St. Martin's or Hope School, I should say, in uh, Winona and Hawkins is a part of that group. And they're doing concerts uh, around the, particularly in Minnesota, but uh, other churches. But uh, there is one on Friday night, and so they wanted to invite anyone who's interested in going at 5.30 in, in Winona. And then a little tidbit that I thought was kind of helpful. Sonia was rummaging through some old papers this week, some old things that got stuck somewhere. And uh, this is uh, on, um, no, I gotta find it. In 2012, September 8, 2012. Anybody want to guess what gas prices were then? $4.65. Well, no, that's a, there, you're a dollar long. Three seventy-seven. So isn't that, you know, when you start looking, people often think, well, what value is this? Well, it does put you in perspective if you're paying attention. Because most of these things come around again, and most things, uh, uh, it's kind of circular. It's kind of uh, something in which uh, we don't always uh, pay attention to. But uh, it's interesting to see that. Um, and there are some other things that we came across this week that also was, was the case. All right, well, let us, uh, <clears throat> let us rise as we begin our worship this morning. We gather for our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so as we come before the Lord, we come with our confession and forgiveness because we need your mercy. And so let us begin. Lord, we need your mercy. In this hour, help us to see our sin and need to ask for a fresh start. Help us to see the shortcomings in our lives and look to you for the answers to our problems. Give us a new vision of what life can be like. Teach us to hope, to live, to give, and to have faith. Lord, we need you for mercy. Our God has heard our cries and felt our pain. He has had mercy on us. God has seen our need and provided for our salvation, seen our condition and provided the solution, seen our heart and given us a Savior. <coughs> Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sin is no longer the weight that holds us down. We are free to live in victory free from sin and of our self-deceit and from Satan's power. Praise God for grace. Amen. We turn to our psalm this morning, and I'm often reminded of uh, this part of the country in which we live because of the first line. And so let us read it responsibly. Lift up your, my eyes to the hills, for where is my help to come? My help comes to the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over you going out and coming in from this time forth forevermore. You may be seated as we turn to our hymn. And gathering him, rise up and say to God. Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. proficient, 
equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message. Be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and they will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hey, time for kids. Hey, good, we got Brian. That's good. Here. <laughs> no, there's some action here. All right, we're going to start. Oh, you know it. All right. So, I don't know if you listened to that uh, little lesson we had, that reading we had from the Old Testament, but it was about Jacob changing the name to Israel. Okay, so the question I have for you, and, and I was thinking particularly you two, because I see you almost every Sunday, what does your name mean? Huh? <laughs> you know? You did? How's that? Your mom went to college in Ireland? Oh, I see, that's the deal. I was kind of curious about that myself. So that's the thing. So how about you, Trinity? All right, that's right. That's the Trinity, okay? That's a Christian concept. We believe there's one God in three parts. All right, Ireland, I know what that means. Land of opportunity. Erie or Aaron is land in Irish. And uh, what? For fertile land, that's another thing. So I thought that was appropriate for you because uh, I think you're always one of one, one of opportunity, and so you might have to look up your own name when you get uh, get home, but find out what it means and see whether that's something that characterizes you. Because in the story with Jacob today, what happens? His name is Jacob, which means deceiver or even trickster. And if you think back and if you know the story, he tricked his dad into giving him a blessing. And then he was on the run for 20 years. And so now when God wrestles with him, that's what happens. He changes his name, which means struggling or wrestling with God. And that's what he did. And I think that's kind of an interesting name because maybe that's something that we all should think about. That maybe we all wrestle and struggle with God to some degree. And what God means for us and what it means for us in our life and all that sort of thing. So, when you think about your name, think about whether you're the one who lives up to that name or whether that name characterizes you. And that even though your parents maybe didn't think about that reason, that now maybe it makes more sense and maybe God was active in that choice of your name. So that's pretty interesting. All right, well, good enough. Thank you for coming out. Please rise for the gospel. That's
and not liking the way things are. And so in those 50 years, those disciples who lived on and saw them die in the 50s and the 60s, and on in to the end of the century, I'm sure wondered about what is the future? What is going to happen? And so they're weary. They're tired. They're continually fighting. But that's where the positive emphasis of Scripture comes in. It's a positive emphasis of people like Thomas. Thomas, who is one who is willing to go and to die with Jesus. It's a story that just follows after the raising of Lazarus. That Jesus is fearing, in a sense, or at least his disciples were fearing for his life. And Thomas steps forward and said, if he's going to die, we'll die with him. They were determined to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. They were not going to allow those kinds of evil cross currents in their life, the kind of persecution that they were experiencing to take a hold of that. They were going to be deliberately and intensely persistent in what was happening in their lives. And so even when Thomas shows up finally and wants some evidence, he wants to rest assured that what he's really after is really the case, is really important, is really something that happens. And so Thomas is determined in his own life to be one who follows after the person of Jesus. Another biblical instance is that of Paul. The Apostle Paul, better known as Saul to start with. Saul was one who heavily persecutes the Christians. He was glad and celebrated the martyrdom of Stephen. Then, of course, he had the conversion on the road to Damascus. And his whole life changed. And we are totally indebted to his writings. And he was determined just to persecute Christians and then reverse course and was determined to realize the importance and the centrality of life of Christ in his own life. He was determined to see that that was going to happen. And so when we finally realize and finally arrive at the time when Luke's gospel becomes widely known, people had seen this. But that still didn't mean that they weren't weary, that they weren't challenged. But that's okay. That's okay because it's the way life is. Life does not always come to us in an easy way. Life can be difficult. And we need that determination of faith to carry us through. And so by the time Luke came, yes, there was some weariness. And there's been weariness throughout all of the history of Christianity. And so for you and for me, think about this. If you even know just a little bit of the Christian history that's, that's occurred in this 2,000 years, you know of the ups and the downs, the goods and the bads, even some of the bads that are awful, but some of the wonderful things that have also happened. But that determination through those years has kept the faith alive, alive for us. Alive for us because we have come to know the faith by those who come before us. For those of us who have survived, survived these years, and I say that because there are so many around us that we know that have died young, but we are called to carry on the faith. We are carried on to be faithful. We are carried on to be determined to pass on the faith. 
And when we look at this record of people like Thomas and Paul in the 20, 2,000 years of Christian history, how the determination of those who've gone before us has brought us to this moment. And we are called to carry on that determination. We are called to be persistent in the faith. In this story that Jesus uses, this parable, it is a challenge. It kind of comes to the fore. It is a challenge for this widow to be persistent, to be one who is determined to get her testimony against all the odds. And we have all felt that in our own life. Or we've seen it for other people. That that was totally unfair. That was totally uncalled for. That was evil. That was unjust. But this woman pursues it. She's determined to get the justice. And the lesson from that is that even though this judge, by the way, this judge is a secular judge, he's not a Hebrew judge because there would be three of them. One chosen by each party and then someone neutral. Sounds like our own legal system, doesn't it? Huh? But this judge has total sway over this woman. And in the text, if you could read it a little bit closely, it's not there, and they don't translate it this way, but he's afraid of even getting a black eye from her or being, well, maybe killed. It's that intense. She's that determined that no matter what happens, she will follow through with it. But the lesson to be learned by this is that even though this judge is evil and gives in to her for whatever reason, God is so much greater. God is the one who gives, gives gifts. God is the one who gives faith. God is the one who gives us what we need every day. God is far beyond any understanding of this judge. That God is one who is far beyond our understanding. And how wonderful that is. Because it's God's kingdom. The kingdom of God. We pray that prayer in our prayer, the Lord's Prayer. And so maybe this is a little bit of what Jesus and Luke and the disciples were thinking about. Thy kingdom come, or your kingdom come, we would say. So let us look a little bit and see this last week at confirmation it happened to even be the one, the second petition. And so this is what Luther said. Thy kingdom come, or your kingdom come. What does this mean? The kingdom of God certainly comes by itself. It comes without us. However, it comes by itself, without our prayer. But we pray in this petition that we may, it may come to us also. That we may ingest, that it may be a very much a part of us, the very kingdom of God that God brings to us. And that we are his subjects. And he is our master and Lord. And Luther goes on to write, God's kingdom comes when our Heavenly Father gives us his Holy Spirit. When that Spirit dwells within us and we behave like we ought. We think like we ought. We move and act and serve like we ought. Like God would have because it's God's kingdom. It's the way God wants us to be. When our Heavenly Father gives us the Holy Spirit, so that by His grace we believe His Holy Word and lead godly lives here in time and in eternity. God's kingdom. God's kingdom is now. God's kingdom is in the future. God's kingdom is everywhere. And we are the people in that kingdom to carry on that kingdom, to be those special people that move and march and Relate the faith to those who go after us, just as those who have come before us. We are God's people, and it is his kingdom. And Jesus' concern as he ends this parable, will there be faith on earth when I return? Will there be faith? Well, I'm sure all of us wonder at times. We did this in thought. 
But it is. It's that faith. It is coming to realize that we live in that long line of faith. And that God in his goodness will give us the justice, will give us the faith, will give us the grace and all the elements of the Spirit of God to live and to carry on the church. Because it is his kingdom. And we are those who are workers and members within. And this week, now on Wednesday, we have the Youth and Family Night. The Youth and Family Night. And everybody's concerned about our youth, and not just in this congregation, and in fact, not even in the church, and the whole society. There's concern about young people and how it will be. The irony of it, of it is, every generation has had that concern as long as I can remember. People have said that to me for 50 or 60 years. What's going to happen to these young people when I was growing up? Well, I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> but, Wednesday night, when all seems in a sense the loss, and the frustrations that certain people in, that are sitting right here have gone through over the years of trying to get young people engaged in the congregation, to help people to understand and to have a lively Congregation all the way from the cradle to the grave. It is God's grace. It is God's movement. It is God's activity. It has led to people putting together a night like Wednesday night. To bring us together as not just young people, but young and old, the whole family of the church. Because it is our responsibility in this place to carry on the faith, to share the faith, to give opportunity to those who want to embrace the faith of Jesus Christ. And how wonderful that is. Because now that determination sparks hope. Hope in one's life on its many, many facets. And how many dimensions are there to God's kingdom? How many parts? How many people? How many places? God's kingdom is everywhere. And we are a part of that. And we need to bring that ahead. Because we are determined. Determined as a congregation. Determined as individuals. Determined to carry on God's kingdom. It starts in this life and ends in eternity. I want to close with you today a prayer. And I think it's a little long and read really slowly, so I hope you have a little chance to think about what's being said. <coughs> like this. Grant thy servants, or your servants, O oh God, to be set on fire with your spirit, Strengthened by your power. Illuminated by your splendor. Filled with your grace. And go forward with your aid. Give them, give us, O Lord, a right faith. Perfect love. True humility. Grant, O Lord, that there may be in us simple affection. Brave patience, persevering obedience, perpetual peace, a pure mind, a right and honest heart, a good will, a holy conscience, spiritual strength. To enter into your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We need to be determined, determined as Christians, to celebrate the kingdom of God as his gracious grace that comes through Jesus Christ. And so may the peace of God, 
that surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We turn to our hymn. We welcome you as fellow members of Christ Lutheran Church, and on behalf of the entire congregation, we are glad you worship God with us, hearing his word and sharing his sacred supper of forgiving love, and we look forward to serving you in the name of Christ. We ask that you continue to regularly worship with us, share the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, and contribute your God-given gifts to the full life of our congregation, for God's glory in the name of Jesus Christ. We are called as Christian Lutherans to show the good news of God in Jesus Christ through our words and deeds, both by our service within the congregation as well as our pilgrimage of everyday living. God has called us to be his servants and witnesses everywhere. If this is your affirmation as a member of Christ Lutheran Church, please affirm this by saying together, Yes, by the help of God. Yes, by the help of God. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for these new members of our congregation. By your life-giving power, 
Bind us to each other in Christ. Strengthen us for your service. Support us in everyday living. And bring us together in unity and peace to experience your eternal kingdom now and forever. Please rise as we continue our worship, as we confess together our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we come to you this morning, we pray that you will continue to instruct us and continually drive us each day as your people, and so that we, we become those faithful, those faithful ones who carry on from those who have gone before us, that you help us to be determined saints, forgiven sinners, to carry on the work of your gospel and your service in this place and all the places that we touch each day of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we look to you today, we are not just strangers to the difficulties of this life, to all the things that happen, to the things that we read about, the things that we see, the things that we experience that are in a bad way. Lord, help us to be ones who is bright light, the ones who shine goodness and not evil, the ones who love and not hate, those who respect others and don't disrespect others, and all the other things in which we need to be and guided by your Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who especially have difficult times, those who have financial stress, those who are struggling in relationships, those who find food and rent and all the things that are before them are difficult to obtain. For those who suffer loss in Kentucky and Florida and California and Texas and all the variety of places that have suffered through natural disasters. And those evil things that happen in our world and particularly in our country, that we would be ones who would have a good life, the good light that shines in the darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we come to you today, we also realize that we have needs of our own. We have things that are difficult. We have things that we want to lay before you, and particularly for others. And so we take this moment to pray in silence. <coughs> We especially remember in our congregation this morning, Elder and Helen Bird, John Jan Glasgow, Ramona English, Todd Fetch, Janice Pink, Dale Howard, Bob Janka, Rob Whitewine, Jeremy Rupp, Lorraine Shepherd, Carol Wheeler, for the call committee, for the family of Chad Keister. And for all those who've lost loved ones in death, do we pray for them? We pray for those who've lost loved ones in their grief. And we pray that their hope is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. All these things we hold up before you as we come before you today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so as we go forward in this week and after this day, 
that you, we are, you go with us, and we are little Christ in the world, celebrating the goodness that you brought to us through your great gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you. It's red, which means I'm running out of juice. <laughs> it is. Actually, it shouldn't be on that. <clears throat> Let us continue with our offering prayer. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to share with all we need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready? Please come.
Please rise. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his holy precious blood strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto eternal life. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look with favor upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Before we close, I want to ask our five new members to come back. Maybe come out with me or you can sneak out, however, to, come up, to be the first ones to have the cake that we have to celebrate new men. <laughs> The honored guest should be first, right? <laughs> Closing him, 866, verses 1 to 3. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of we are marching. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching. We are marching in the light of God. We are dancing in the light of God. We are dancing in the light of God. We are praying.